My name is Ali Kobe Ekman. I'm a Yankantara woman from um, South Australia, uh, from the desert regions, the northwest corner of South Australia. Um, my mother was born at Maralinga. My grandmother come from Mendogna. And um, it's a privilege to be here. I think uh, initially writing gave me uh, a lot of healing. Um, I did a creative writing course at a, a Bachelor Institute, which is an Aboriginal uh, college in Alice Springs. The year I got my son back, um, I wasn't uh, allowed to keep my son when he was born, so I had to wait 18 years. That was 2001. And um, very emotional time. So the classroom, that group of writers, and especially the lecturer, um, were really vital to me at um, making sense of a lot of emotions, a lot of new emotions, um, when my son returned to me. Um, and then, then it grew into a, uh, a, a, a family uh, thing. We used to sit around the kitchen table and um, my more traditional family used to translate the English into language and we used to just make up fun stories as we were all getting to know each other and, uh, and introducing my son into uh, a cultural Aboriginal family. Um, that was a lot of fun and, um, and it was also uh, a way of learning our language. And, um, and then the community, and the community wanted a little bit of uh, ownership of, of that storytelling uh, model. Um, and uh, then in 2007, um, then poli the, 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 the writing about politics became important as, um, as the federal government introduced the intervention. Um, and so that was a way for um, that community to have a bit of a voice was um, uh, through the poetry and they would um, uh, guide me in, um, in, um, in the subjects that they thought they were important. Um, I could never have imagined an actual career from it because it was so grassroots and it was, um, and it was fairly innocent uh, too. It was just really about having a voice, and Aboriginal voice, uh, uh, traditional way, is very softly spoken and very um, precise in what just is. It's, it's almost undebatable because uh, the, um, the old traditional people are so tuned to the land and, and, and to the spirit that for them life just is. And that was the, I think that was the best thing that I learned in those early, early days. The trajectory of my career has been like a plane taking off from the ground that hasn't stopped um, in five years since being first published. Um, I have uh, several books now. Um, I'm being translated overseas and traveling overseas and, and um, 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 here at Iowa City for the International um, Writers Program, other panels around the world. Um, totally the things that um, we could not foresee when I was sort of scribbling around um, in, the, in the desert. And um, I have to uh, monitor that. I have to remember what the old people taught me about what just the simplicity of living life that just is because uh, Sometimes we're tempted to wander off our path for the sake of the audience or the sake of a book deal or the sake of popularity. And uh, for me, that's the things that I have to watch constantly. So that's, the, that's my personal challenge. I think the desert. Um, 
has always been my biggest solace. When I first ran away from my adopted family, I ran to the desert. Fifteen years later, I found out that was my mother's birthplace. She was born under a tree there. Um, and my son was conceived there, yet three generations didn't grow up together, but we are all bound to this traditional land. That sits very uh, strongly um, in my heart and in my spirit and in my skin. And um, when I'm feeling a little uncomfortable in all my travels, that's where I imagine that I am sitting. And I think even uh, if I open up my laptop, I imagine... Uh, the, the you know the desert in in my mind the other thing would be the resilience of our aboriginal people um, we have uh, a really um, staggered history uh, i guess i'm talking from my from my personal experience uh, about belonging and loss and um that you can you can heal from that, you can overcome that, but it will always remain to have an effect on your life. And um, you know, it guides me in the way that I um, interact with my grandchildren and what my hopes might be for them when I'm gone. Um, and um, you know, we have this wonderful. Um, tradition of humour, um, of sharing, of humbleness, um, that often I can't transport to the professional stage and to panels because uh, that's not how I can interact with people outside um, Australia, Aboriginal Australia. Um, yeah, I sort of miss the carefreeness of just... Uh, of, of that um, tradition of humour. You have a flag. Yes, I have the flag on my shoulder because um, I'm very proud of this flag. We sort of joke that this is one thing that the government can't take away. The flag was uh, uh, launched in um, Adelaide in 1974 and this was the time when Aboriginal people were no longer considered flora and fauna. The Terranalias had stated that we weren't human, that we were plants and animals. And so it's very uh, important. And, um, you know, a lot of us wear our colours, as we say, um, because there's many places in Australia where people find it so difficult to fly this flag. Even in the, in the week, uh, NAIDOC week, which, which, which is one week of uh, celebrating uh, Aboriginal culture and the achievements of Aboriginal people. Even in that week, some councils r refused to still fly our flag. So we sort of show it a lot. Mm. I like the style that... Uh, that I fell into, which is uh, minimalist writing. I don't, um, I'm a chatterbox, but on the page I don't like to say too much. I like to par it down so that it can't be argued. And um, that's also influenced a little bit because out bush, if you talk too much, you're considered to have a mental illness. So I think if you write, overwrite a piece, that's a sign of uh, your mental stability um, and so sometimes with poetry I like how poetry can um, can be closed it, it, it can be um, entire and I spend a lot of time trying to get rid of one more word and to par it down to just quite the the, the kernel of what I want to say I've discovered some um, amazing poetry from uh, from Russia. 
Um, you know, I think, you know, some of the best poetry comes out of uh, being in a really challenged place or a really threatened place. It gets, gets to the core of humanity. Um, I have a big pile of uh, novels uh, written by Indian authors, um, again influenced by um, a recent trip and, um, and soon to return to, um, to India. Uh, so I, I think... Um, I think my spirit really likes India. In, going to India is like living inside a poem, and so um, uh, when I'm home, I'm enjoying their literature as well. The writings of Ujuru Nunakul, whose original name was Kath Walker, she was her first published poet, and um, her first collection. Um, had six runs in 12 months, six print runs in 12 months. Um, it was at a time, I think, when Australia was uh, quite ready to have um, a bit of a dialogue with Aboriginal people and, um, and to listen and learn. Um, we seemed to move closer to that moment and then away from that moment and, um, you know, um, it seems to be a little bit tidal um, but at that time, and her writing was so beautifully crafted, um, she was a woman who was dignified even if she shared anger. And most people think anger is a, a, a negative thing. But I think for writers, there is a healthy side of anger that we should take to our to our writing and be definite about our opinions, um, especially when we're coming from a cultural place, that we stand, um, we stand on, the, on, on, the, on the place of our identity and we stand from that place of what just is. This is who we are. And if we um, uh, are forced to leave that place, it is assimilation. We want the world to reckon it is assimilation. Sure, there is compromise. Of course, we can, we can compromise. But we must always return to that, to that core. And if we're not allowed to, it's assimilation. Well, definitely, yes. Um, I think in many countries, um, literature is not still considered... Um, uh, the most important art form. It's um, um, it's definitely important. Um, a school can't exist without literature. It can't. It, it's weaker without dance and uh, without um, film and without um, music. But the basic of, of, of language is literature, and, and and it's the most basic art form. That's how I see it and the other art forms come from, come from that. Squirrels. <laughs> the countries and the audience that can still move past the literature and come and ask you as a friend or woman to woman, how are you? I think, still think that's one of the most important questions that we should be asking each other. There's a, there is a big responsibility at being a writer and once you're published you can't take anything back. So, um, you know, often the the... the the, uh, the unseen pressure of constantly thinking, constantly editing, um, um, to get it perfect on the page. And um, as, as I said before, like speaking for a society or speaking for, um, for a culture. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it at festivals or any, any time when someone comes out of the crowd and says, Ali, how are you? I think that's the most important question.